What's up guys, Craig here from Crazy Family Adventure. So today I'm gonna to be talking about independent trailer suspension and trailer disc brakes. We recently had the opportunity to partner with More Ride to have these installed on our Montana fifth wheel and so far it's been amazing. So going into it, there's a few things that you need to know. So let's talk about that. First, why would you want to do an upgrade like this? It's pretty substantial, so let's talk through a few reasons why we chose to do it. Second, we're going to have Jack Enfield, who's the sales and marketing manager for Moride, go over the system in detail. He's the expert on this, he knows it inside and out, so he's going to give us a great breakdown on how all the components work together and how it's much better than the traditional leaf spring. Third, I'm going to show you the installation process. So it's a two and a half day install, so there's some things to know going into it, especially if you're a full timer. So we'll talk about that as well as show you how they do it. It was pretty amazing. And then fourth, I'm going to give you a review on the system. I've had it now for several weeks and we've driven it about 1800 miles from Elkhart, Indiana, all the way down to South Texas. So I've gotten a really good feel for it. So I'm going to tell you what I think. All right, so why would you want to do an upgrade like this? For us, it really came down to four things. The first being boondocking. We really like getting off grid and kind of getting to some epic camp spots. And usually that means going through some rough terrain to get there. So I want a suspension system that can get us there safely and securely. I don't want to get to this epic camp spot and then come into the trailer and see that the cabinets had opened up and all of our stuff flew out and broke all over the place just because we hit some rough roads. So that's number one. Number two, I just want a smoother ride. We spend a lot of time in the truck towing it and I want it to be as comfortable as possible. Brianna's working a lot of the time so I don't want her getting seasick with the truck bouncing all over because the trailer's everywhere. I want a suspension system that'll keep it smooth and level. Third, braking. This is a huge one for me. I have a big fear of coming down mountains with a braking system that isn't up to par. So I want to be sure and I want to be completely confident in my braking system coming down a mountain. Also, stop and go traffic. I've been cut off one too many times and have had too many close calls for me to be okay with it. So I just want a braking system that will stop me when I want to. And lastly, it's just peace of mind. I want to know that I have the best suspension system possible to protect my rig for years to come. Having a better suspension system should mean that it's going to reduce all the wear and tear it normally would take. So knowing that is a great feeling. All right, let's check in with Jack Enfield and see what this system is all about. So the way to think about RVs are becoming so popular and there really are houses on wheels. And the thing that we know and RVers can relate to is that roads are rough and their house on wheels are going over very, very rough roads. And so the running gear is really important to cushion and absorb the shock because we want to protect the frame, the sidewall, the components, the contents, everything inside the coach. So what are the basics? Well, for years, uh, manufacturers have used leaf springs. So what is a leaf spring? It's just steel leaves stacked on top of each other. And so what happens is, is the axle is attached here and, and that controls the wheels. And so when you go over a bump, the leaf spring just moves up and down in response to the wheels moving up and down. In the center, we have this, it's called a steel equalizer. Some people call it a rocker. And the leaf spring is just attached there. And so now you've connected your two or your three axles together. So when you go over a bump, again, this moves up and down. Now the conventional leaf springs travel about two inches when you hit a bump, and that's from unloaded to maximum travel. So if you have bumps that are bigger than that or harsher than that, then that shock is gonna bypass the spring and go to the frame, the sidewall, the appliances, and everything inside the coach. So what we wanna do is if we can get more travel here, we can better absorb shock and protect your house on wheels from rough roads. So again, this is the traditional, if you think about this as good, because it's been around for years, this is what the, the manufacturers have used by and large as the standard in the industry. And if you really want the best, now you say, well, why would I want the best? Well, sometimes people are full-timers. Sometimes they're going to Alaska, they're going to Mexico. Sometimes, uh, just in your personal life, you just want to know that you've got the best that you can because it's gonna enhance your lifestyle. It's gonna make you enjoy the product more. Uh, when it comes to the house on wheels, again, if you think about it, the running gear is what absorbs the shock. So there's a product out there that will literally do the best job in the industry of cushioning and absorbing shock and protecting your house on wheels. Um, when you have traditional axles, 
Recognize that the wheels are connected together. So when the right tire hits a tuck hole, the left tire feels it because they're connected with the axle beam. What we wanted to do with the independent suspension system is we want to say, how can we deliver the best performance possible? Well, there's two ways you can do that. First off, if you can get as much travel as possible. The second thing is if you can disconnect the wheels so that they only respond to whatever they're going to. So that's what the independent suspension system does. First off, there is no connection between the wheels. So when the right tire hits a chuck hole, the left tire doesn't respond. And that's the same whether it's a two axle or three axle. So each wheel is working independent of each other. Then we have to go into how do we attach everything and then what is the mechanism to absorb the shock? Well, first off, we want to make it more durable. So on a conventional leaf spring, you have a three inch wide hanger. While more right, you can see this is the hanger. So this is way beefier. It's going to spread out the load over a longer, longer uh, span. So we're going to start off by going much, much beefier. We also have a giant cross member that goes side to side. That cross member we showed you one on this SRE 4000, well this is much bigger, much more massive, and what it does is it really just strengthens and reinforces that frame. So now the foundation of your house is much, much stronger. But then what we want to do is we just want to absorb shock. We told you leaf springs have two inches of travel, CRE 3000 has three inches, the SRE 4000 has four inches. Well the independent suspension system has five inches of travel. So what we do is right inside here, we put a double rubber spring assembly. Mm -hmm. And the way the rubber works is what we call rubber and shear. And so the rubber plate, when um, load is applied, it just moves up and down. And it just moves up and down, just like this, over and over and over. And so we can go up to five and a half inches of travel, which is so much more significant than two inches of travel. So the rubber spring is the, the really the mechanism with which we absorb shock. Now we have a really heavy duty hydraulic shock absorber. If you think about your tires, they're kind of like a basketball. When you bounce a ball, you get a lot of residual energy until the energy is gone. You get that bounce. Same thing with a tire, you get bounce, but then you get a lot of the chatter. Yeah. So what we're able to do with a shock absorber is we're gonna pull up and then we're gonna pull down really hard so that that tire's not bouncing. So the rubber is freeing it up, the shock absorber is pulling it down hard because we don't want that tire bouncing. Right. The rest of it is just mechanics. We have a giant beam assembly. It's kind of a lever arm that just moves up and down like this in response to the, the wheels and tires when they hit bumps. And then we have what we call a journal bar so that you can lubricate because we've got some, some uh, Teflon bearings in there. So basically we're just moving like this. Each wheel is gonna respond individually to the road and we're gonna use rubber to cushion absorb the shock and the shock absorber to keep the tire from bouncing up and down. Okay, and then these are made for uh, different axle weight ratings, correct? Yeah, exactly. So basically on the low end side, think about 5,200 pound axles. That's probably the, the low side of it, but all the way up to 9,000 pound appli axle applications. Okay. Uh, in the industry for fifth wheels, you, it's very common to see 7,000 pounds. Now, one of the things that happens, especially in the full timing community, is people will come in and they'll kind of be nudging their gross axle weight rating. Now, more I cannot change the rating of the trailer. That's done by the manufacturer. But what we can do is help you manage your lifestyle better. So for example, if someone comes in with 7,000 pound axles, but they're really kind of marginal weight wise, we can go to the 8,000 pound steel components, really beef it up, but then we can put the rubber in that matches their loaded weight. Okay. So what that allows us to give you is strength, but performance. Okay. And again, we can do that on the, the 5,200, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, and 9,000 pound axles. Okay, great. All right, and then another component, and this is getting into something else, but you can see here that these are disc brakes that are on uh, this demo unit. Uh, that's another upgrade that you guys offer that yeah. we are also going with with the install. Um, if you can maybe explain a little bit compared to the traditional drum brake that are yeah. on trailers and yeah. wheels. So uh, the standard in the industry for years has been electric brakes. And you, in your truck, you have a controller, you set the gain, it's got electric feed, it tells the, the brakes when to, when to come together. Um, been around for years, you know, one of the complaints um, is they're a little bit noisy sometimes. People, when you go in the campground at 10 or 11 o'clock at night and people yeah. know you're there, right? You've got the streets in and everything. Uh, but the other thing is, is sometimes, especially if you're traveling out west, you're pulling grades and coming down, people notice what's called brake fade. Well, that happens because you know, you're riding the brakes. What RVers want is just, they want to be able to stop when they want to stop. 
And automotive technology has been around for years via disc brakes, what's made its way to the RV industry. And what this is, is just an upgrade over the existing electric brakes. It's got pads and motors and calipers, and it's an easy upgrade. Um, what basically when someone comes to us and they want the independent suspension system, is we can put back on whatever brakes they want. It can be electric brakes, it can be disc brakes. So why would someone want to put on disc brakes? For a couple of reasons. The biggest one is you want to be able to stop when you want to stop. Maybe it's because that person pulled out in front of you and they didn't realize that you got this 36 foot trailer in a yeah, truck. and 17,000 pounds behind you. Yeah, they think you're gonna be able to stop when you want. Well, you want to stop. So what you can do with disc brakes is you get to stop when you want to stop. The, the stopping distance is about 30% shorter than conventional. The other thing is just smoother braking. You don't have the, the wear on the electric brake pads or on the disc brakes like you would the electric, mm -hmm. and it's just smoother, more consistent, and it's not noisy. So coming in at night, you don't get that screeching yeah. sound. Yeah. So the reason I go to disc brakes is it's smoother, it's quieter, it's more effective, and your stopping distance is shorter. And it's a great upgrade. Now, how does it work? So you still have your controller in the truck. Mm -hmm. And so you still have an electronic feed that goes back. Now, what we do is in the front, usually in the front storage, we put a pump. Mm -hmm. And the pump takes the electric feed, and then it sends the hydraulic fluid out to each of the wheels. Right. And so you adjust. And what people, um, the first test ride, you know, they, they kind of get used to what disc brakes are, but what you'll find over time is you'll light the field, it's gonna stop shorter, it's just gonna be more consistent, and you're gonna have that peace of mind, that confidence of when I wanna stop, I can stop. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. And in our truck, and in the newer ones, they have the electric hydraulic kind yep. of setting on it. Yep. So it's a very seamless kind of exactly. changeover. It's something. simple and easy. If someone has an older truck, then what we can do is put what is called a cam, and that basically helps the signal, okay. and so that we can again uh, do the upgrade. Yeah. Now, do you have to get an independent suspension to get a disc brake upgrade, the answer is no. Disc brakes can go on to any suspension. So okay. it can go on to leaf springs, it can go on to 3000, the SRE 4000, or it can go on to the independent. The advantage of uh, having it done with the independent is when we're doing the independent, we're already pulling stuff off. So there's some labor and cost savings by doing it. But you can put disc brakes on um, with whatever suspension system you have and enjoy the benefits of smoother, quieter braking. Yeah. The independent suspension system, uh, the cost for a two axle trailer, depending on 7,000, 8,000, is right around 42 to $4,400. On a three axle, you're gonna be another third above that, so just over around $6,500. Um, the disc brakes are around 3,200 for a two axle trailer and around 4,700. If you do the combination, there's some savings of a few hundred dollars. So again, just think about just a little over 4,000 for the independent suspension on, two, on a two axle and think about just over 3,000 for disc brakes on a two axle trailer. All right, we got the crew up and moving this morning. You guys all ready now? So we are gonna head over to the waiting room here at Moride. It's actually really nice in there. It's like a hotel waiting room area. It's pretty nice. And then they're gonna order us some lunch. You guys want some lunch? Yeah, so we're gonna go do that next while they get started on the rig. Let's do it. The kids hit the jackpot. Get all the snacks they got, all the sodas. Oh, is this gonna be a good place for you guys to hang out today? Yeah. <laughs> all right, now we're gonna get some measurements here. So basically what you guys do as part of the suspension is to increase the ride height of the... No, we're gonna level your unit. To level it out, okay. We're level you to your truck. Right, because yeah, this is a pretty bad... It's pretty off level. From front to back, it tilts pretty good. Here we go, pulling in to get the work started. Alright, there they go, lifting it up. Now comes the part where they are going to take the tires off and just have the rig up with no tires or anything on it. So, it'll be interesting.
morning, bright and early. Look at the clock behind me. 6.02. Haven't been up this early in a long time. We are out the door. We are all ready to go. They're gonna be putting on the suspension today. So they start bright and early. It's actually dark and early, but we're gonna get out of here so we can get the slide outs closed up and let them get at it. So here we are. All right, here's the morning view of our front yard. How you guys doing this morning? Up and at them? Sorta. Zombie face. <laughs> We're out here now as they are building the suspension that is gonna go on the bottom of the rig. So check it out. So they put the tires back on and one of the cool things about the independent suspension is that you can do a wheel alignment just like on a regular car. The trailer suspension you usually can't do that with the leaf springs but on this you can so if you have any type of um, out of alignment issues with like tread wear or stuff like that you can bring it into a shop and they'll line it up for you. So that's what he's finishing up right now. We had a pretty good test drive. It was surprisingly noticeable how much smoother of a ride it was. Elkhart has a lot of bumps and train tracks, so we tested it on all of that. All right, 
the review of the system. Like I said, we've drove it about 1800 miles now from Elkhart down to South Texas, and we hit some pretty good testing roads along the way. I-10 in particular, have you ever been on that one? Oh, that's awesome, right? No, it's not. It's a bumpy mess that's usually under construction. We actually took that same route when we were leaving Texas to go to Mori to have it installed and everything was shaken loose in our trailer. We took the same road back down to Texas after leaving Moride with the new suspension like butter. It was so smooth. I didn't even know that we were crossing the bad parts of I-10. Like I kept thinking, no, it must be up here a little bit more. No, we must be a little bit further on. And by the time we got into Texas, I said, okay, it wasn't bad at all. Perfect. So the smoother ride that I was looking for, definitely got it. All of our stuff inside of the rig stayed in place, we left more stuff on our countertops than we ever have in the past. We usually really lock that down. This time we said, let's see if the suspension can do what we think it can do. And everything was fine. We left our blender out. We left uh, the toaster on the counter as well as our paper towel roll holder. All of that stuff was out. It didn't move at all. So that was great. Braking. This was the biggest thing I noticed when we first took it for that very first test drive. It felt like someone was pulling me through the back of my seat in the truck, and it was. I didn't adjust the trailer brakes, you know, coming out of for the test drive. I left it at a seven and a half gain with high intensity, which I've always had for this fifth wheel. That was way too much. I had to bring it down to six and a half with medium intensity, and that was perfect. Smooth stopping, very on demand and responsive braking, which is exactly what I was looking for. We haven't done any mountains yet, so I'm confident, but I don't know for sure. I'll see that in the spring when we head out west. I'm really looking forward to it though. I have no questions that it's gonna handle it perfectly. Overall, I think it is a very well worth it upgrade. Like Jack said, you're looking at about 4,200 to 4,400 for the independent suspension on a 7K, for the 7K axles on a dual axle system, a little bit more for that triple axle, and then similar pricing for the disc brakes about 3200 for two axles 4700 for the three axles i also thought the installation process was very professional and done very well they really thought about us as a family being full-time and where we're going to stay and how we're going to be comfortable for those two days while they're doing the installation so they were very cognizant of that which was really cool to see they also stand by their product. They have an amazing warranty and they're there for any questions you may have. All right, so I hope this video gave you the information you need to make your decision on independent suspension and trailer disc brakes. I say go for it. So call more right up, tell them Crazy Family Adventure sent you and they will hook you up. All right, thanks for watching guys.